Good evening. Welcome to the Vernon Township Supervisors meeting for August. Uh, it's August 1st. And uh, we'd like to start with a prayer and salute to the flag. Supervisor Schneider, please some prayer, please. Bless us as we gather together for this meeting. Guide our minds and hearts so that we will work for the good of our community and help all your people. Teach us to be generous in our outlook, courageous in face of difficulty, and wise in our decisions. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roll call, please, Lori. Snyder. Here. Maloney. Here. Sierra. Present. Wagner. Here. Smith. Here. Okay, this time we'd like to open the floor to citizen comment. Anyone for citizen comment tonight? Gary. For the record, can you introduce yourself? My name is Gary Miller. I live on Kevin Drive, Vernon Township. Uh, since this public period is uh, uh, first on the agenda, you might say, uh, I guess we'll have to make two assumptions regarding what might be talked about later on. And, and there again, that's an assumption also. Uh, and those assumptions are regarding options one and two that were discussed last night. Um, the first assumption would be that the, the Deborah Drive speed bumps that were uh, talked about should be separated from the conditional use boat. The fact is both items are tied together. There would be no need for the bumps in the first place if Hunter's Ridge wasn't there, let alone the expansion that's going to take place. It is because Hunter's Ridge is there that the bumps are necessary. It becomes a matter of cause and effect. They need to be dealt with at the same time. Now, one of the questions are kind of a uh, back and forth between me and, and Mr. Porter had to do with uh, research as far as the legality and I guess practicality of those speed bumps. So was able to find a significant piece of information on the internet. The title of this is Pennsylvania's Traffic Calming Handbook. It is put out by the Pennsylvania Department of Transportation. It is publication 383 that was established in July of 12. I'll read the pertinent information regarding not speed bumps. They're referred to as speed humps in this publication. I'll only read what pertains to Vernon Township. A speed hump is a raised surface on a roadway that is typically three to four inches in height and 12 to 20 feet in length. Speed humps are by far the most popular traffic calming measure in the United States, likely because they are effective in reducing speeds at minimal cost. The Watts, W-A-T-T-S, hump is recommended only for local streets with volumes less than 3,500 ADT and posted speeds of 30 mile an hour or less. Typical uses. Within residential travel speeds, humps create a gentle rocking motion encouraging motorists to slow at, to a safe speed at or below the speed limit. 
in Pennsylvania, the speed, the watch speed hump is typically used. The watch hump is designed to slow vehicle to 15 to 20 miles per hour at each hump and 25 to 30 miles an hour between properly spaced humps. Numerous studies have demonstrated that watch humps can reduce speeds by about eight miles per hour in the vicinity of humps. Signings and markings. A speed hump warning sign, parentheses, M-U-T-C-D, W17-1, has been incorporated in the Manual on Uniform Traffic Control Devices. This sign has also been included in PennDOT's Publication 236. It is recommended that this sign be installed either 100 feet in advance of speed bumps, at the hump, or in both directions. It is also recommended that the speed hump sign be accompanied by an advisory speed plaque. And then it gives the, the possible, uh, possible spec specifications for building such a hump. This, as you, as you probably gathered, is not only just acceptable, it also sounds as though it's favorable to put these humps in. There was one other thing I neglected to say or talk about. Ah. <coughs> I guess there was three things. Normally, no hump should be placed within 150 feet of an unsignalized intersection, which is what we're referring to here. Ideally, speed humps should extend across the roadway from curb to curb. And here's one that, that probably will, uh, will be of interest to some folks. In areas where snow removal problem, in areas with snow removal problems, a measure such as a flexible delineator post may be needed at each hump to alert snow plow operators to lift their blades. In other words, they do not consider snow uh, speed bumps or humps to be a problem for snow removal with adequate signage. The advantages can be very effective in slowing traffic on residential streets relatively inexpensive to install and maintain, can reduce motor vehicle conflicts, should not pose problems for bicyclists or motorcyclists except at high speeds. Disadvantages, the watt speed humps are inappropriate for emergency response routes, which would be more like Mullen Road middle road, so on. Then they talk about a Seminole County hump. They should be avoided on major transit route. Deborah Drive is not. Snow re removal personnel may require special training in speed hump areas. However, speed humps have been used successfully in many jurisdictions with heavy snowfalls. Combine that with the facts that in this area, we're only talking winter snowfalls between mid-December and mid-March, three months. Within those three months, not, not every night is gonna require plowing. In fact, it was quite light this past winter and two other winters within the last five or six years. Snow, remo snow removal is a non-monumental problem <clears throat> at all. And when Pennsylvania Department of Transportation actually, by what you heard, is in favor of them, we are hoping that the, the Board of Supervisors here would also be in favor of them to slow the traffic down on Deborah Drive. That is all. Do you have any statistics 
that tell us how many accidents have occurred by reason of speedboats and the, any fatalities that may have occurred by reason of a speedboat installation? I do not. I can only assume by the fact that this appears in the Pennsylvania Department of, of Transportation handbook that it's a non-problem. It would not be there if there was a, a multitude of accidents or problems. Are warning signs required? Pardon me? Are warning signs? Yes, uh, as I read here. A speed hump warning sign, and then there was the, the designation for that actual sign number, has been incorporated in the manual on uniform traffic control devices. This sign has also been included in PennDOT's Publication 236. It is recommended that this sign be installed either 100 feet in advance of speed humps at the hump or in both locations. A couple of things, Gary. Do you have any idea how many speed bumps would be required in that quarter at, month? At this point, because I know there's there's a set. We did that in Forest Hills. If you walk back, and we put in speed bumps, uh -huh. and there was some set number. It was I don't know. Yeah, it, it depends upon two hundred and fifty feet or five hundred or so, there was some. Depends upon the speed, the road configuration, yeah. and so forth. Yeah, I'm okay. very familiar with the publication. I actually reviewed it again today. I'm sorry. I'm very familiar with the publication. Yeah. We okay. reviewed it again today. So there, there, uh, there, there's something that, that right. can be placed, but it would you'd have to look to see. I, I wouldn't want to arbitrarily say that two were needed. It would have to be studied just to make sure where where they'd be appropriate. Right. You know, relative to the the configuration of the other roadway. And driveways so, snow to be Of course, we don't run trucks like, well, actually, we do have a couple good sized dump trucks that contract it. They do seem to get up and over those bump, those humps. You know, you've got to be careful. And then what the flex is enough. But uh, the only thing that I've seen that's a negative is a wheelchair, especially power, power chairs. Uh -huh. Now, we don't have that many out on, on Deborah. But uh, that is one thing I know it's a problem for when they hit that curve. We do have someone in four stills that's in a chair and yeah. really has problems. And the, the speed humps are a, a much broader right. installation than the, mm -hmm. than the bumps in both right. four stills and... And, uh, uh, and since great. last night, hearing you and talking to you, I spoke to several of my people, or my people, people in uh, my neighborhood, and they have no real problem with that happening out there. They can see, you know, regardless of the expansion or not, there's a problem there already. And uh, I, I, for one, as I said last night, I'd like to pursue that in, in doing something there to have that uh, done. I don't know if we can really tie it into the conditional use. I don't think so. I, don't think I mean, all you can do is... Not on our road. But right. It's off site. Right. <clears throat> I think with the regard to the wheelchair, mm -hmm. that depends on a gradient coming oh, sure. into it and yeah. a gradient leaving it. Right. Some people just put a bunch of asphalt right. across there and roll it. It's okay, that's good. Right. You know, you've got to do it more than that. Well, he said three to four inches, which I think yours are higher. And, and this is much broader. We put them in by supposedly whatever the restrictions were at that time as far as width and, of course, we went side to side. And, uh, I can't remember the width. But they worked. We had the same problem within our development. People just cruising through, and he's he's correct. They slow you down. They slow you down. Um, in answer to your original question, Mr. Steiner, um, how many? Uh, referring back to the option nine, nine, excuse me, option one from last evening. Uh, two. Correct. Each so, those those were near the entrance and the exit or whatever you want to say. I mean, at both ends. Wouldn't you want one stuck in the middle or well, somewhere I, 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 as your cruising through there? That would really need to be determined in accordance yeah. with appropriate place. I mean, there's design conditions and parameters for that. And I, I don't know from what where the driveways are or all the other, but if, if, you were to, if you were to 
desire to have speed humps put on, we'd look at that stretch of road and see what was appropriate in accordance with the design. As long as, as long as there are two, you know, somewhere at both ends, it would be nice to have a third one in between because, I mean, right. there, there's going to be speed sure. picked up in between there, obviously. But um, at the same time, I think it still will keep, keep it down from what it had been. And uh, according to, to that petition there, uh, the residents are happy with one at each end. Uh, and, you know, according to what this manual says, or this handbook says, it has uh, PennDOT's blessing for controlling, or their term is calming, traffic calming uh, device. There's just so many walkers that walk all through there. It's yeah. just, I mean, it's, you're so, so right. You know. Well, these speed bumps, the recommendation was for between uh, 12 and 20 foot in length. It's not just a little two foot speed. Oh, yeah, no, you can so kind of end that's that's side, side to side. That, way, it's that would make right. it easier for the wheelchairs. It's right. very broad crest. a gradient going into it. Right. It's very broad crest. Right. And the approach slopes are, again, it's not a speed bump. It's, it's a. Right. It's the it's power eyes chair. More larger so installation. Push chair. Yeah. It's in there. And it could be his design. But, but that's. The profile that I am seeing here on the, on the watts is 12 inches yeah. for width. And there's, a, again, there's a number of different kinds of, of uh, speed humps. I'm not familiar with specific installations I've seen around here. Prescow has a uh, mobile. They, they install it during the high season to slow people down. When you enter in, I believe it's about three feet and wide. And the ramp slopes are, are the approach and ingress and egress slopes are more ease. An example of a calming, a calming device are the raised intersections on North Street and Meadville. The approaches to those, and those approaches are actually in an accessible area. So they could be made to conform so that you still get the calming effect, mm -hmm. or the speed reducing effect. But What's your opinion, though? Plowing. Uh, plowing. It's going to be hard plowing, I'll be honest with you. We always angle our plows to the right. So when you come up to one of them, you're going to have to straighten out a little bit or you're constantly your nose piece up plow is going to be gouging into that speed bump. I, If you're going to put them in, I would recommend just take them out during the winter months, put in the portable ones from March to December. But that's totally up to you. Well, as far as I was concerned, you know, I, I got to come back to the, the seasons of the year. Uh, we're talking probably 345 days of them being there permanently installed with low maintenance, never having probably to be replaced unless damaged. Uh, first, and then the 20 days of possible plowing that takes place in the wintertime. I mean, 345 versus 20 for a permanent effect. Um, I also looked at the possibility of the portables. And yes, they are available. Uh, but their lifetime was not all that great. And there's two different ways of installing them, at least what I saw. One comes in a roll that you just unroll, and the weight of them was negligible. Uh, so you, they were actually set up for specific events, like maybe up at the fairgrounds when they wanted to slow down at, at that particular time. The ones that were semi-stationary uh, required boring into the, the blacktop. Um, it would be up to the board to decide whether that would be the way to go. Um, it, 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 just, it would just be difficult to understand why it would be that big of a problem for the, the nights that were being plowed or the days that were being plowed and only four, at only four locations within the entire township. 
it's just difficult to, to picture a problem with that. And I don't know what the schedules are as far as the, the drivers are concerned, but if it's the same driver that runs the same route, he certainly would be able to learn that real quick, how to deal with that. Yeah. We're back to the conditional use that's coming up later. I mean, we wouldn't necessarily incorporate this into that. I mean, other than Mr. Anderson and what your request was for one out by, in, you're pretty much on board on that, right? Uh, out by his stop sign before that. I mean, this is something that we, wouldn't we uh, pursue or continue on our own, not attached to the... Right. I think it's a good idea myself. I, I would do. I do too. I would recommend, if you want to investigate this, you would conduct a formal traffic study on the road. It would then allow, you know, determine what was necessary, where they would go. Because unfortunately, we just don't want to put them two places that we think they would go because just out arbitrarily, we want to know if that's where they're going to go, that's where they're going to be effective. So I think you'd really want to do a traffic study. Yeah, and I, I, I'm, I'm not prepared to recommend that two are appropriate, where the locations are appropriate. It doesn't seem to me that that logistically is going to be an issue with that placement, but they, they need to be analyzed for where they should be placed appropriately to most effectively calm the speed. Uh, and that can be done independently. I, I don't know, and, and maybe Mr. Tom should speak to it, but I'm not, I'm not sure that, that as a condition of the conditional use, that's why I recommended last evening maybe separated issues. They can certainly be, be looked at in parallel. But I, from an engineering perspective, I'm not comfortable saying yes to or appropriate, that that style is specifically appropriate for this instance. But there, there is no doubt some, some installations that can be put there. And, and, and we would agree with that. We don't want anything that's done haphazard. That could be a problem for either the public or the township. Uh, do it right to begin with with all the facts behind it, yes, that, that is definitely agreeable. The, uh, the only other thing that we would request is that before the first construction truck appears on Deborah Drive, those humps would be in place as, as a time frame to go by. The construction vehicles are a genuine problem. And it's, it wouldn't just be with the, with the expansion. There's going to be another house built in our area also, and, and there's been considerable problems with those vendors also. So, you know, before the first construction truck hits Deborah Drive, we would ask that... But that again, you're back to kind of put in a contingency on that. It's, a, it's entirely up to, from my perspective, as to when or if you direct us to look at this. I mean, I understand, and I'm with you on that. So, but, so uh, we're at your pleasure as to when that yeah. may be looked at, as well as the time frame of when you want that implemented. That's it. Right. And, and well, you have construction season as far as asphalt, too, when you can, I mean, if we're trying to do it in November or something, you can, if it got to that point, I'm not sure it's scheduled, but, yeah. yeah. Well, and there's, but, there's again, a point, even if you can get asphalt, we're in the same situation. That, and quite frankly, I'm not, I'm not sure when develop, construction development is going to going to commence, but uh, we don't want to get asphalt at the wrong time of the year and try to incorporate it on the roadway and then have it peel off. But, but the timing is, of course, uh, again, if or when you would direct us to look at that, we, we can do that. Uh, and, and it's whether you coordinate or require that it it be implemented in prior to or during or what this is absolutely to your pleasure. Gary, you said that that publication has the installation. It does, and and I can give that to you. Well, I can look that up on the internet. Thank you. Because because I'm I'm just concerned with it may not be as easy on a an existing roadway or if they're putting them in when they're paving you know that's going to be part of the the pavement 
but just to Two put separate. asphalt on top of old. Well, they, they, uh, <coughs> they dig it out and then put it in. Here, what do you call that? Yeah, they, you in construction mill the road. Mill the road. Yeah, yeah, they mill yeah. that area. And, and put a milling notch in, in so it's incorporated yeah. in. So, but there again, we look at the profiles and cross sections of the road, where they've been placed, how to properly install them, the condition of the, the existing condition of the road, where they would be installed, the, the shoulder conditions such that we don't cause any issues with dropping off the edge, that type of thing. So, uh, but it, it, it can, they can be made even on an existing roadway to, to be integral. Um, and they can be removed. The example that was shown on on the net uh, showed a saw saw cut for that particular trough going across the blacktop, all being removed, and then all new blacktop then putting in, so that it's not just a matter of you know just a couple inches or so. It goes all the way down to the base. Was the way it was presented. And that there are a number of different ways to do that, and that's by looking at the road circuit. There's a lot of things to consider, just to make sure it's done sure. correctly if it is implemented. The only reason I focused on, on the watts was it seemed to fit in with the speed and the desired uh, control, uh, the bottom part of the speed, the, the low end of the speed on, on Debra. That was the only reason I happened to concentrate on that. But yes, the, the other ones are listed in this handbook too, and I'm sure you're familiar with that. Anyone else? Any, um, well, De Gary, you know, we'll, we're definitely, I think we're all in agreement that um, we are going to move forward with this. Uh, we'll talk with Ashley, Rob, we'll coordinate that. We thank you very much. You're welcome. Anyone else? Public comment tonight? Okay. Uh, approval of minutes. Approval of minutes for July 1st, 2019 regular meeting. I make that motion. I have a motion. Second. Any discussion? Any so moved? Sure. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Direct finances, motion to direct the treasurer to issue checks for the approved vouchers due for payment. So moved. Second. Motion and second. <coughs> All in favor? Aye. 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 Anyone, any discussion? Thank you. Motion to ratify payroll for the employees from July 23rd, 2019 to July 20th, 2019 and the supervisor's pay. So moved. motion. Second. Any second? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Correspondence? Any correspondence? I have none at this time. All right, thank you. Move forward to the police report. Randy Detzel, Chief. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and good evening, everyone. Tonight, I'm going to give our report of the Vernon Township Police Department for the month of July 2019. We answered a total of 232 calls for service, bringing our yearly total to date to 1,574 calls. We had two criminals that we had to take physically into custody, which were actually arrests. We had 17 motor vehicle accidents this month. We had nine citizens we assisted that were locked out of their vehicle. We had nine traffic stops for various violations of the vehicle code, and we issued seven citations and gave two warnings out. We uh, had non-traffic citations. We didn't issue any this month. We had a couple of warnings. K-9 was utilized on two occasions. We had one citizen assisted on a non-traffic issue, and we had one ordinance violation, which we also gave a warning on. We spent, we had 10 hearings this month at District Court, Lincoln Zohavers, uh, Judge Zohavers across the road on Route 19. All of the hearings were criminal hearings. We didn't have any traffic hearings. We traveled a total of 2,689 miles patrolling the township. A few things to mention for the month. Uh, I realize school's out, but with school will be coming back, and I'm always stressing to watch out for the children. And, you know, kids are doing funny things, they're playing and everything, so please watch for them. 
Uh, the roundabout, I have to say, has been going extremely well. We we had no issue, no real incidents at all with that. And again, just be cautious of the workers. They're trying to do their best. I know we had an instance here a week or so ago where motors got very upset with the guys and they're just trying to do their job. They're doing the best they can. It's moving along, I think, pretty well. So please, folks, just give them a little bit of a little bit of respect there. And then, of course, again, if there is a fine, it's double because there is a construction zone. And last but not least, if you're going to burn, please get your burning permits so that we don't have that issue to deal with. And that's my report for the night. Thank you, Randy. Thank Any you. questions for Randy? Yeah, I wanted to, I know you had a couple of the cars setting up uh, at Kevin and Deborah. Yes. For the stop sign. Yes. Did you? We, we observed we observed stop signs and there were a few instances where we made a couple of stops, give some warnings. We had one flagrant violator and we, we took care of that issue. I don't think that, that gentleman's going to do it in the future. But you can see the problem at that intersection? Or is there is, but, but it's all of our intersections. Of course, you were somewhat visible. Correct, that, correct. That, I mean, that's it, the thing. It's I mean, it's ongoing. Yeah, there's traffic everywhere we go. There's, you know, there's traffic. We could set up the, actually any of them and run into infractions. But um, whenever we're needed, if they let us know, we'll sit there and do the best we can. We'll try to, you know, be visible and hopefully we can get folks to obey the traffic rules. Any other questions? Yes, yeah, just one. Sure. I know we mentioned the burning permits the last couple of months, especially with the warmer weather. Just for the knowledge of the general public, what, if any, is the cost of the permit? Well, I'm not sure the cost of the permit. I believe we see Mrs. Swaby for yeah. that. Uh, we issued the permits. They're good for 30 days. There's no cost to it. It's just a specific why they're burning, where they're burning at, and they have to follow the ordinance. Um, and that's the cost of the permit. And that's already in the directive that they come and get from us? Yes, from the we've been issuing them for seven years now? I just thought that would be a matter of general record. Sure. Just for the knowledge. Well, it's good. Like I say, when there's violation and we get called and then we go out there and, you know, a lot of times you just have to have the folks put the fire out. But it's always a lot better if they do, you know, get it properly done. This way there's some general information as to how exactly. to do it. Exactly. Exactly. <clears throat> thank you. Thank Most you. Okay. Anyone else? Okay. Thank you, Randy. Yes, sir. And move on to the road report, Ludwig Zarembinski, road minister. Thank you, Chairman Mullen. Good evening, supervisors. Uh, July is another busy month for us. Uh, continuing mowing burns. We put most of the brush in North Watson around in Kennedy Hill, Car Hill, Middle, Vernon, and the intersections along Route 19. We completed daylighting and cut berms on roads for seal coating and paving projects. Uh, repaired the uh, sinkhole on Middle Road. Cleaned up trees and limbs on South Watson around Sportsman and Swamp Roads after uh, some storms. We were out three or four times checking roads this month after storms. Uh, mowed the Ernst Trail for them to have their run there, the, uh, I believe it's July 14th, but the run was. Uh, repaired washouts on Putnam, Cutter, uh, cross pipe on North Watson Run, repaired, repaired berms on Stevens Drive. A ditch cleaning on Bailey, Stevens, Mullen, Eastview, and North Watson Run. Uh, middle Road cross pipe uh, by Larry Coons was dug out and, and paved in 19 millimeter uh, preparation for the paving project, along with some base repair on Rogersbury Road. We assisted uh, PennDOT, the Crawford County Maintenance uh, Department, with a uh, driveway pipe replacement across the street at uh, Judge Zillhaver's. Uh, we also assisted Northwestern REC with a down tree on Car Hill. Uh, new driveway pipes installed uh, on Mullen Road for Menor and on East U Avenue for Yens. Yens excuse me. Uh, installed millings along driveways, mailboxes on Middle Road after the paving. Uh, temporary repaired traffic signal mast arm bracket, little I. Uh, Bruce and Merle came the next day to install a new bracket. Uh, repaired a cross pipe outlet on Pennsylvania Avenue. New equipment maintenance. Uh, Truck readjusted the cam sensor, cleaned the EDR valve, and some new fuses. Uh, truck 5, a new radiator, rear brakes, rotors, lines, repaired exhaust, and inspection. Tiger boom, replaced another hydraulic uh, steel line. And on the Tiger mower, replaced broken uh, bolts and uh, replaced some uh, bent blades. We met with suit coat on the seal coating project. It's now been completed. Uh, everything looks fine with that. 
Sharon paving started uh, paving on Middle Road and North Watson Run was finished yesterday. And hopefully it will all be completed by the 16th. Uh, Lindy paving will be starting on the CDBG paving in the Vernon Heights area on Monday. And for the uh, people up on Vernon Street that park out along the road, uh, ask for your cooperation. Uh, we'll be coming around uh, tomorrow and, and the, the police will be around this weekend to remind people to please move their vehicles off the road uh, Monday and Tuesday for their paving. And uh, let's go on up. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Any questions? Uh, yeah, we got to do this thing with Ben Dot for putting the lines down and all that mm -hmm. stuff on the uh, <coughs> middle. Yeah. Uh, they usually pave or paint our lines every two years after we get everything done. They have to center seal the center seam yet right. and do the shoulder backup. I'm going to call and ask them if they can fit us in this year, but yeah. I, I don't know if they're going to be able to or not. They did one year and then a couple years later they did of course so if they have time to do it they were pretty pressed last year i think we didn't get them painted until the end of october last year anybody else no the sharon paving they've done middle and north watson you said yes and then they're coming back they're or? coming back uh, monday to, to uh, do rogers ferry road okay and, and then the CDBG. How long do you think that'll take? What do you say? Three days? He said, yeah, three days of paving Maybe plus two more for the shoulder back. back up in the ceiling. So they were hoping to be done by next Friday and weather depend. <laughs> yeah. They were also hoping to be here in June, weather depending. <laughs> so. Right. right. All right. Thank you. Good. You guys have been busy. Good job. Thank you. All right, we move on to the administration zoning report. Robert Horvath. Good evening, supervisors. I'd like to start my report tonight with some highlights from the zoning department for the year. Between zoning and sign permits, we've received over $31,000 in fees, which represents uh, 7,755,000 in new construction throughout the township. Obviously, we've had numerous commercial projects, however, we're seeing a good amount of residential work, including the construction of four new homes in the township. Uh, it's been a great year in the zoning department and things are already looking up for next year. On administrative note, I'd like to update everyone that negotiations have begun with the police department for a new collective bargaining agreement and uh, good progress is being made there. Um, one thing I really want to touch on tonight, over the past two months, the township, we've received a lot of uh, complaints about high grass. I want to remind everybody of our ordinance 10-402E, uh, which is permitting the growth of any grass, weeds, or any vegetation to conceal rubbish, garbage, trash, or other violations of Ordinance 10-402. Uh, I'd like to thank the police department for their help with this, uh, especially Officer Grasso, he's been handling a lot of these. We have been able to get most people to cooperate um, with just warnings, the officers stopping out and telling them to get their grass mowed. Um, there's been one violator that's continually continuing to violate that we've had to cite at this point. But I just want to remind residents if they see any property out there, we're on the lookout for it. But if they see anything that they feel needs taken care of, to let us know and we'll take care of it. Um, I'm not sure if it's the heavy amount of rains we've seen throughout this year, but we seem to have a higher number of violators this year compared to any other year. So I wanted to touch on that. Um, also, I want to remind everybody to watch out and be aware of their surroundings when driving through the various uh, road work zones in the township. As Lud mentioned, our paving of Vernon Street, Vernon Heights, Reynolds, Dunham, and Glen will start on Monday. We'd appreciate any cooperation with the paving crews, giving them as much space as possible. And also, just another reminder, on Monday, Rogers Ferry between Dunham and Lincoln uh, Ave will be paved, so watch out there. If you're going to work at the old Aftex facility, there might be some delays. Um, and I'd really like to thank the road crew, Blood, Scott, Bobby, and Larry for the hard work they put in this summer getting our roads ready to be paved. Um, one last note, the roundabout. Um, if you may have seen the Tribune article that came out this afternoon, the detour is supposed to be uh, opened back up on August 24th. Um, this project continues to move forward and take shape. So please be careful when you're traveling through that area um, for the next few weeks or so, because the traffic patterns will be shifting. So just be aware when you're going through there. And that's my report for tonight. Thank you, Rob. Any questions for Rob? Do, do we know when Sheets wants to open back up? I know they have it posted, and I can't remember. I can't remember. I know it's yeah. mid-August. I don't know what to say. You say the 15th? Great. 
Um, so we're going to uh, move on the conditional use for Ron Anderson that we had last night. Is there any discussion? Anybody would like to say anything? We took a motion and a second. Any okay. discussion? Okay. I'll make the motion. Okay. Second. Motion and second. All in favor? No, we have discussion no. now. No, we have no discussion. Yeah, sorry. It's a parliamentary thing. Now, now uh, any discussion? Gary? Well, this was this project was approved in 1996. <clears throat> this is so the, the Vernon Township people know what's going on. It was approved in 1996, and because of the time lapse, it has to have another uh, permit through DEP. And But we, because it was approved, we can't say no. It's a legal technicality that we can't say no because it's basically the same design or smaller. And well, by us saying we have the permission, then they can continue through DEP and get the rest of the permits that they need. As I got in a nutshell from last night. Jim? I have some concerns, but uh, overall I think as long as uh, Mr. Johnson fulfills his end of the obligation, and I'm certain that he will. I think I would be in favor of it. Fritz, any comment? Uh, as I mentioned last night at the meeting there, and got into a little length on it, I will be abstaining. I kind of have a personal contact here with where I live and what my involvement is. I am approving, uh, or I, I do approve of what he's doing and what's going on there. Uh, like Gary mentioned, there, you know, he does have a couple things to check off the, the, the list there before it's a complete go. Uh, the only thing that comes to mind, and it has to do with uh, uh, Mr. Miller, and he was asking that we required, or that they would require Mr. Anderson to put that one speed bump in on the north side of his stop sign coming down that road. Uh, is that something that we put in? In this, or do we? That's right in here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is. Okay, yes, it it's is. mentioned. Okay, good. Then we're fine. They're fine. If I read page two, right? <laughs> so, I'm, like I said, I I will be abstaining. Greg, well, I just had a few concerns on traffic-related things. Like, like Gary said, this was already get originally approved, so it's really impossible, you know, that we would not approve it. And it is a beautiful area with, with all the trees. I took a ride back there, but Mr. Anderson, you know, told us that his, he's planning on leaving as many trees as he can, so it will still be a wooded area and, and beautiful. So uh, I, I think he's been very cooperative. and. Uh, at this time, we'll, uh, I have the motion for the conditional use for Ron Anderson contingent upon the following. Completion of easement agreement with Forest Hills Condo Association, Forest East Condo Association, and the Vernon Township Water Authority. And that's concerning the water lines that run through there. Placement of speed bumps at the stop sign located at the exit of the property of UDE, which is Forest uh, I'm sorry. Uh, is that Forest? Hunter's Ridge. Hunter's Ridge. Hunter's Ridge. Okay, I'm sorry. And and obtaining all necessary permits because the permits have lapsed. So uh, I have a motion and a second. All in favor? Would you like a roll call with that? Let's do a roll call. Yes, please. Smith. Yes. Snyder. Abstain. Maloney. Yes. Beer. Yes. Wagner. Yes, for the reservations. All right. So, move on to our engineer's report. Ashley Porter, engineer. Thank you, supervisor, chairman, and supervisors. Uh, <clears throat> brief report this evening just says everything's pretty obvious in the township with what's going on with construction. It's moving along well. They're paving the O'Reilly's today and, and the Dunkin' Donuts moving along uh, pretty well. As also, uh, we have looked at and we look, we're look we looking for a good year. Next year we've entertained in the magnitude of $10 million worth of potential development in the township that coming year. 
no, this was a fruitful year and look for it to be uh, as well next year. That's all I have to report. Very good. Any questions for Ashley this evening? Thank you, Ashley. Mr. Chairman, I, I can only ask, uh, in connection with Mr. Miller's comments about the seat pumps, was he interested in a township placing speed bumps on township roads, or just he's just focusing on this or something? I, I, I don't know if he wanted his comments were directed to the supervisors to have the roadmaster look at all roads for control speed by a Speed bumps or not, I, 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 I assume that he's only talking about. Uh, I understood he was only talking about Deborah Drive. Was was that? It's my understanding that that's probably the biggest problem we have in the township. It's such a concentration. Yeah. Because of the increased traffic. That's all about. About 500 cars probably. How many people are between Forest Hills and Undertrees? Or how many units? Let's say 125, two, three. Well, the last time. The last I knew, it was approximately 10% of the township population. Yeah. Around 500 people, if I recall, in all, all the development. That's what I was in. Five, in five Ballpark. Five and it's been a few years since I looked at it. So that was a figure I heard, too. Plus, you have, what, 50 on Denver? No. Around 42? No. 42 no. signatures. Yeah. But there would have been spouses that weren't home at the time and other folks that weren't home right. at the time. So, yeah. 50. Round figures 50. I'm sorry? Round figures just call it 50 for. for it would be close. close. It would be close, yeah. <clears throat> Anything else, Mr. Thomas? I Anything else other than the speed bump? There's. Anything else other than the speed humps? Well, okay. okay, thank you. New business, um, resolution 2019-07 amendment to the Act 537 plan. I'll make that motion. I have a motion. Second. And second. This is for um, the sewage. It's a, it'd be a small uh, project. Uh, small, sewage small, sewage yeah, small facility. flow <laughs> sewage treatment facility. Sorry. It'd be on Pine Road. Um, it'd be replacing a failing septic system. Right, and it's been all approved. Yeah, and this is just to send it off to the DEP. So, I have a motion and a second. So, all in favor? Aye. 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 Anyone not in favor? All right, thank you. Old business? Any old business? No? All right. Um, that's bringing us into upcoming meetings in well, September already. On September 4th to be supervisor's work session at 7.30 and September 5th works supervisor's regular meeting at 7.30 p.m. And this time we'll go with supervisor's comments. Start with you, Greg. Uh, okay, I was just, after speaking with Gary last night and tonight, I'm a little concerned over the, the speeding as well as you are. I'm gonna go up and check it out a little bit to see, uh, see what I can see. Maybe we'll, you definitely have options to look into. Maybe more police presence if we if need be anything to slow people down because obviously traffic's gonna increase, construction vehicles, things of that nature. And people who are especially existing residents up there don't don't deserve to have that. So that's all I really have. Thank you. Fritz? Uh, no, I really don't have anything to hit on other than the uh, roundabout, as we all can see, that's really moving along, I think, on schedule for the most part, with the exception of 98 there. Uh, as I call it, the eighth wonder of the world is, is going up there, and uh, this time next uh, month should be uh, pretty interesting. All right. Good. That's a good way to put it. No. <laughs> How about you, Joe? I, I think that uh, everybody should be commended as to the uh, roadways and the promptness of the construction that is going on. I have a little bit of concern with the upcoming fair and how that's going to play into all this additional traffic. Uh, I think people should take heed and be a little more cautious on the roadways with uh, that being said and hope those 
get involved and careful and that the general public takes advantage and goes out and spends time at the fairgrounds. Great. Gary? Uh, I'd just like to comment on the uh, driving conditions in Vernon Township right now are not the best. And if you're coming on Cotton Road or Hollis Road to come back onto 322 and come east or even west, please be careful. That is a very dangerous intersection right now because of all the traffic trying to avoid the roundabouts under construction. It's very, very difficult. And uh, I drive that a lot and it's extremely hazardous. So just take your time, be careful, and don't get road rage. And I would like to personally thank Gary Miller for coming, identifying a problem, presenting it to us, and then providing some solutions to that problem. So many times we get a resident comes up and they just complain about the problem, but Gary comes up, tells you what the problem is, and then provides you with information and a little solution to it, and possible solutions. Thank you, Gary. I wish we had more residents like you. Thank you. That's all I have. Okay. I'd just like to say that it was very um, nice last night to see everyone come out for the con conditional hearing and voice their, their concerns in, in a very civil, organized manner. And uh, Gary also gave a great presentation at that time. Um, and, and I think that I can speak for the board that, that we want to take care of the traffic problem on Denver Drive. Unfortunately, here we are paving roads right now. and. That, that always presents a speed problem too. And, and people just need to slow down. There was, there was an accident where a truck hit an Amish buggy and they, it was 45 miles an hour. They figured that guy was going 70 miles an hour. So uh, 70 on 45, that's, that's just crazy. So um, with that, I'd like to uh, have a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. And a second, meeting adjourned.